Hello again. Welcome back. Uh, so I'm just uh, in the career mode for RP0 with my America playthrough here. So I'm just about to um, set up a sub-assembly of this old rocket so we can make our first two-stage uh, rocket. Still pretty much a sounding rocket, but you know, shows us a lot of interesting things. So we still have we're still limited to the same engine. Uh, so you know, really not going to change anything about it. I just removed the uh, the Tiny Tim booster and added a little battery in there, but everything else should still be the same. Let's see, custom, yep, still have those bits. I uh, haven't unlocked any other new technology yet. Uh, okay, so I need to first reroute. So I need it to be routed to the part that I want to attach stuff to. So da -da -da, select two parts, so let's go that one, and then really the motor is what I want to be the root part. Great, so I've got it selected by the root part. Uh, because that's what I'm going to want to attach it to. And I've already saved it there, so but let me just do it anyway. Let's see. Yep. Alright, just to demonstrate that it's totally there and apparently is slightly different from my other one. Maybe I hadn't done the battery or the science stuff or whatever. Or maybe I'd removed the wings. I think that might be it too. But I think I do want to keep the fins. So next, now that I've saved it, and I, I put a little description in there, I'm pretty new to, um, to sub-assemblies anyway, but yeah, I figure that'll be useful, say how many meters per second it has, what delta V it produces, and a little bit about it. So now let me move over to my V2 rocket. This might be the completed project, so accidentally you'll see what it'll end up looking like pretty much. Uh, I'd like to change it so the engine doesn't looks silly there. It obviously should have some kind of supporting base, but let's actually put this together. Because honestly, it's, it is a new trick that I was not previously aware of. Alright, so it we might end up looking a little different from that previous one, uh, but let's throw it together. So I want it to be a shaped... Um, I want it to be a little steeper. Hmm, maybe not quite that steep. But we'll try with it. So the bottom we want, who was it 1.65, I think? Yep. 1.65. And I want whatever the same tank type that one was, highly pressurized false. Here, let me just throw it on here so I can take a look. Um, so it contains ethanol. I think that's why I why it was borked before. Uh, I was trying to fill it with liquid oxygen. Uh, so I don't really want to worry too much about so whatever is unpressurized. There we go. Okay, so liquid oxygen is down there. This will fill with kerosene. I'm not going to worry about um, let's see optimizing it too much right now. Uh, first, I want to go grab that subassembly. So let's grab the upper stage, and I just clicked on it, and it brought it in. And so that's the uh, what it call it? Yeah, it's the core part. So that's how I'm going to attach it. And so now that I've brought it in, obviously I want to change things about that. I assume the core part of this is still the core part, um, whatever, or the root part. So here, let me remove you, throw in a decoupler. Hmm. Yeah, if I wanted to make it more aesthetically pleasing, which I'd kind of like to do, but I'm not going to, I would make, uh, like, use this, you know, fairing base or the interstage decoupler to cover up the engine so it kind of had a little rest. Um, but right now that's kind of time intensive and part intensive, so I'm just not going to do that. Okay, and I want this to be about the same. Hmm. So does that look okay for meh? It's good enough. Um, in my previous one I had a slightly different shape. Actually, I'm going to try that other shape. Why not? Hmm, those, actually, these peaked ones aren't terrible. Wasted, round, yeah, I'm going to go with, with round one. That's what I used before. So make sure it's not pressurized. Numbers are all the same. So now I just need to make sure it fills with ethanol. Ooh, oh, I filled with the wrong thing. Nice. So if you look in here, you'll see two types of it. So ethanol 90, ethanol 75. So what that means is 75% ethanol and 25% water, whereas this is more purely ethanol. And well, you, you may just be willing to assume that ethanol or that water might be a useful rocket fuel, um, but actually it isn't. The reason they use impure ethanol in that is to be used as a coolant. So the water evaporates as it's, as it's run through the rocket engine, uh, cooling components, which is nice. But as they you know, design things better and come up with new interesting tricks, they don't have to do that anymore. 
so they move to just using straight kerosene or more uh, more concentrated ethanol just as the designs improve and that kind of looks cool okay so I just need to get the right amount now so 4,500 yeah that's basically the process um, the only th other thing I'm going to need to do is change what the root part is. So 4, 5, 2, 6, eh, close enough. Looks good to me. So there we go. Now I just, um, before I set up the staging, yeah. So I still want this part to be the root. So root, select something that's attached, because this is going to be what's left when everything's together. Oh, and I may as well change the pattern of this to make it look, um, oh, come on. Attach. I selected you, didn't I? There we go. Good. So now that's the root part. So in theory, once I get everything set up, that's what the delta V readout should be for. So there we go. First light engine. And this I'll set up for hot staging. There we go. So where I'll be igniting that second stage before I separate it. Okay, and you'll see why when we end up flying it. Which may or may not be this video, but I'll try to rush to it. So it's all constructed. There we go. We're going to have avionics only while that first stage is active. Uh, and we're not going to, we're not going to put, oh, come on, don't lose it. We don't need those science parts anymore. That's just extra cost. Because as it is, you know, I was talking about the cost of rocket A versus rocket B before, but now the price of this rocket, so let's see, let's call it V2 Aero B. Why is there, there's always something I can't do. Let me see, Aero B sounding rocket. Looks like today I can't spell. Aero B. That makes sense. There we go. Let's call it an SR for sounding rocket. Looks good enough to me. Now, you, you may have obviously noticed the delta V readout. I don't know why. That might be, you know, I don't use subassemblies very much, so that might be part of why it's not showing that. Maybe if I save and load it, it'll read out correctly, but right now it's just very clearly not reading out correctly, even though this tank's full of the right stuff and this readout is for the lower stage. Now, I didn't call it out before, so save. I'll do a simulation, may as well. I think that's kind of the pattern I've been going with. Um, and I'm leaving the fins on that, because there's two ways for me to stabilize that second stage, and I'll, I'll discuss both, probably end up kind of showing both of it. So the fins are useful. Um, in theory, though, I can spin up the rocket. I don't entirely know how, but it does let me, and I know it's not a reaction wheel or anything weird like that. So something I think about the thrust transform for that first stage engine gives it roll control, which means shortly before the V2 stage burns out, I can just spin it up um, just by Q and E, just regular roll controls. So let's pull this up. And see out here, the delta V readout is right. But now that I've added this upper stage, um, 0.3 tons, so this is 0.3 tons heavier, so that will have affected the thrust away ratio. So you can't throw, it, or it's not that valuable to throw a second stage onto anything, uh, but in this case I've got so much uh, thrust weight ratio at the ground that it's just a waste to not try to throw a second stage on if I can. Alright, so let us give it a go, light up the first engine, wait for it to light up, and then go. So I'm going to let it just follow the prograde just for this first one, because why not? Let's see if it has some fun. Whoa, it's arcing down pretty fast, but yeah, whatever. So this data is increasing. Um, actually, in my very first test of this uh, configuration, it failed. It's pretty neat, actually. Here, I'm going to try to pitch it up a little bit. So it has control. The, aero, the aerodynamics are kind of fighting it. Ooh. But I can. Interesting. What did I lose? Ah, two of the front fins. Eh, well, fair enough. I'll be spinning it up anyway. <laughs> that makes sense. It was too much uh, kind of um, side force for those. So I probably should have tried to keep it further straight up, but, you know, live and learn. <laughs> it might explode, actually. We'll find out. It uh, definitely looks like it wants to explode, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to wait. So hot staging is starting up the second stage because it... Um, in most cases, but not in this one, the fuel needs to be settled or ullaged, and it fails. Eh, that's all right. These are just simulations, so let's just start a new simulation. Um, normally, 
if, if you tried to do that with a normal engine, um, it would be slowed down because when the you know the first stage s stops running and the fuel is just going to get knocked all around in the tank, usually up to the front, whereas you want it pushed down to the bottom where you have your fuel pumps. So that's why it's often you know called hot staging or it's useful. Um, it's a useful technology to just start uh, the startup process for that second stage engine while it's still attached to the first stage. And I just use the delta V readout as a way to tell that. So this time I'm just going to try to keep it pointed straight up. So light up the engine when I see it lit. So this time I just turned on SAS and I'm going to keep it pointed vaguely up until I get near the speed of sound. And then I'll just let it kind of lock into the program vector. Actually, so these are the aerodynamic overlays. Not too meaningful in this case, but you know, they are what they are. Ooh, ooh, wow. Well, made them a little more meaningful. So it looks like I couldn't, oh, now, it's, now it is going fast enough. So now I don't even have SAS on, it's just locked in. There's just enough, uh, the forces are balanced when it's supersonic such that it uh, just keeps going straight forward. So that first stage could totally fail short if it, you know, if it wanted to. I'd see it fail here, obviously it would stop being lit there. There's a number of warning signs that I would get. It's one of the very few cases actually where having sound would be a little useful because then I'd have you know, that fraction of a second earlier recognition of the loss of sound. Okay, so I'm just watching the delta V readout here. So once it gets down to about 100 meters per second or you know, one second of time left remaining, I'm going to light up that second stage. Ooh, oh, actually, before that happens, I'm gonna, no, too late. And too late. See? So actually, that will fail in this one for some reason. Um, vapor in the feed lines shut down. So unstable. So the propellants in this do need to be stable. Um, so I, if I had staged it earlier, like I said I was going to, but I didn't end up doing successfully, it would have... Uh, this is still going to be the highest um, launch I've ever had, I think. Um, it's just a simulation, though. But you can see them kind of floating away down. <laughs> But yeah, I do want to ignite that second stage. So actually, I'm going to have it um, follow the prograde or whatever. But so that's why I do these simulations, because I need to kind of follow a very specific process in order to get this launch right. So shortly before stage burnout, before I even think about lighting the engine, I need to spin it up. Mm-hmm. Of course, each of my, other than the one where the first stage engine just failed early, which you know, makes some sense uh, because this is you know, only at half of its uh, maximum potential data, it does make sense that this engine could fail. Beyond that one, every other test I did off recording was, you know, was picture perfect. So see, now it's past the startup stage, so it looks like it's very reliable. In that other test I had in the past, it uh, it just failed during that stage. It's right now it's really unlikely for it to fail, and um, that's what that long time represents. But it absolutely could. In which case, I would just try to light this engine up. And it's an advantage to people who like kind of want to take their time even more than I do in this, and just write. You could write KOS code so that it recognizes, you know, okay, we've just lost thrust early, and do that. You could write some really robust code in order to recognize that. Okay, so we're mostly locked in. I'm just going to keep it locked in here. And about 10 or seconds or so before there, I'm going to start you know, rolling. And that will keep it spin stabilized when the second stage goes. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start spinning it up. I'm not entirely sure how it's accomplishing that because it just shows kind of one thrust here, but it must have some ability for roll control to be able to do this. There we go, come on. And did it ignite? Looks like it did. Excellent. So I did not fail. And so it's still in that early startup time, I think. Or maybe it's just a really unreliable engine. But either way, so you can see how we would have made it pretty high even if that stage had failed, or say if the first stage had failed a little early and I was able to get this off. But either way, you know, we're going to get a really good altitude out of this two-stage rocket. So there we go. This is our first successful test of, the, uh, of a two-stage rocket. And these fins are even, you know, are even somewhat useful still. Uh, not not up here, obviously, but right when we uh, when we separate them. So I'm just going to rush this. So there is definitely some science we can get. Um, this is just a simulation, so it doesn't matter too much. But there's definitely science we could acquire, and we'd get even more if we lob it out over the ocean, 
or we lob it out that way. And you can definitely do that. Still, still the same process with this uh, rocket. Just a couple seconds before the first stage burnout, just start rolling it. And these fins definitely help with stabilization as well. I did have a test launch where I didn't, um, I didn't even have the fins, but I spin stabilized it enough, and it was it was sufficient. But the fins add a margin of safety that I like to have. So as you can see, the highest I'm going to get with this is you know, about a thousand. So that <laughs> units are weird. You're used to seeing kilometers, but that's actually you know mega meters. So a thousand mega or a thousand kilometers is a mega meter. So a thousand kilometers. That's what that means. So that's the peak altitude we're going to hit, and I'll end the video when we achieve that. But yeah, that's uh, that is the successful test of this of this spacecraft. So I might do some very light tweaking, but uh, everything from creating, taking that first rocket, turning it into a subassembly, loading up the second rocket, modifying it a little bit, and then attaching this. And if you look up the the bumper, uh, the bumper. Um, uh, V2 bumper program. So that's this is relatively similar to what they do, although I think they used a very simple solid second stage in, in reality in that. Hmm. Did the engine fail early? Oh, it totally did. Neat. All lucky. But we still, we wouldn't have got much more altitude even if it had burned that little bit of residual fuel that was left over. But yeah, in practice this is, you know, similar, but it's two liquid stages in comparison to that. So I'm just going to speed it up until we hit that altitude. Oh, and I guess it's a simulation, so we won't even hit that. It's something I've never actually showed yet in simulation. So I estimated how much time and it told me what it would cost, and I can basically pay more to add more time. So it's going to add it in, in units of whatever my previous time was. So if I paid for five minutes, this would buy me five more minutes. Um, and if I don't quite need five, like let's say I paid for 30 minutes. And I didn't want another 30 minutes because that would be expensive. I just wanted five more. I'd have to go back to the editor and kind of start a new simulation with that custom time. But yeah, that might end up saving money in the end anyway. So revert to editor, particularly if there were changes in the early part of your flight that you wanted to tweak for. Now let's see if when it reloads in the VAB we see the right delta V. But it might be that I constructed it from subassemblies, and that's why it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it's just something about the control from here. Like I can't tell it to, no, I can't tell it to control from up there, even though I've set that as the root part. But in practice, be, yeah, the delta V here is reporting crazy. So I'll, I'll have to ask around about that, since I'm just much less familiar with um, with using subassemblies like stages. But that's really what I want to do in this playthrough, because historically, if you, you know, if you know any um, examples of, of history of rocket stages, there's like, you know, there would be a lot of reuse of stages, and I, I look forward to doing that. You know, I might th strap this stage onto an even more powerful version of this. So I'd still be using the same upper stage, not rebuilding it or anything like that. So it's evolution of these individual stages and then, them being used together. It's really, uh, really an interesting history, I find. Like the, an example is the Able stage, uh, which was used on a Thor missile, I think. So it was used on Thor, and then it was used on a later, more powerful rockets. And I think the last one it was used on was uh, with the, the Atlas launch vehicle. So it was a, kind of a light, uh, it was, you know, at, at its inception, it was an advanced upper stage, and it was used with more and more powerful first stages as they were developed. So they would kind of drop it off at a higher speed or a higher altitude. So giving the overall vehicle more capability than it had had with the previous first stage. So it's a really interesting history. I look forward to kind of utilizing that strategy in this playthrough. But, uh, you know, thanks for watching the video. Uh, look forward to, uh, you know, making uh, the next one so you can watch it. Goodbye.